think environmental literacy is ultimately about seeing our world and our place in that world through different lenses, about having shifting the conversations in society to be more society to be more inclusive of the rest of nature and learning to appreciate the connectedness of life. Back in the 70s, Jacques Cousteau came over here to talk to the people who were becoming concerned about Chesapeake Bay. And he did a pretty long speech, and but but something that stuck with me is he he drew a uh, distinction between in education between instruction and education. You know, he said instruction certainly has its place. It's teaching you useful skills like how to mix two gases, how to uh, evaluate the stresses and materials so your bridges won't fall down. No, good, good thing, we need it. But education, he said, was really teaching people how to behave in difficult circumstances. And even in the 70s, it was pretty clear that uh, environmentally, uh, we were putting a lot of parts of nature in difficult circumstances. And, uh, you know, it was really about changing behavior, changing values. You weren't going to solve it just with better bridges, just with more fuel efficient cars. And I, I think about that a lot and how we change education because when I look back over the 40 years I've been covering the Bay and the environment, uh, We've done a lot of things, greener, smarter, smart growth, green cars. We've, we've done some pretty cool things with technology, management, but we've pretty much resisted fundamental change. So we work a lot harder on producing a Prius than we do on building communities so that we won't need to drive nearly as much. And, you know, I could go on with a lot more on recycling versus consuming less. My next door neighbor uh, down at Salisbury University got her PhD in garbage, basically, uh, uh, in recycling. She, she tells her students, one, that recycling is bullshit unless you change the whole system of production, you're wasting your time. She also recycles. I know she puts her recycling out on my curb. I don't know why she does that, but, uh, and I, I think, you know, this is, this is one of these things. I, I've heard people poo-poo these little individual actions, but I, I agree with Sarah. I think it's incredibly important. I, I don't think we can recycle ourselves to a better world. We can't overnight change the U.S. economy from one that says grow or die, no alternative. Isn't that amazing? It's like you went to a diet doctor and he said you've got two choices, eat yourself to death or starve. Uh, hey, what about a sensible diet? That escapes economists, but don't get me started. I, I, I was an econ major at Hopkins, and it, it pretty nearly ruined my life. But um, I, I think it is the most bankrupt of all our major academic disciplines, but that's another lecture. Uh, so where was I? Yeah, changing behavior and values as opposed to growing, quote, greener, growing smarter. But but you got to do these little things, too, because you got to uh, I have a friend who lectures on land use and development, and usually people say, uh, Dr. Fodor, I can't possibly affect these big patterns of land use. And he said, well, well don't worry about it. No, you can't. Start where you are in your town, in your community, and do the best thing you can. And the next question is usually, but won't that just push the growth if we're successful into the next community. Yeah, then they'll have to deal with it. You know, you start where you can, you do what you can, and you don't worry too much about the fact that that alone won't change the world.